and Faraday, but also have had to have the knowledge that in fact he had to have an electronic circuit, which we call the voltage intensifier circuit, that gave us the ability to switch off the amp flow and allow the voltage to take over in a dead short condition. Now, in all probability, if he had had this knowledge, then we'd have been on hydrogen uh, many, many, many years ago. Now, the point out about potential energy on voltage, um, to give you an example of this, is if you go home and you turn on your TV set or your computer monitor, you're adjusting the B plus voltage potential behind the screen, and as a result, you're now accelerating the negative charge electrons coming off the, off the gun, and that increased velocity of the negative charge electrons striking the fluorescent material now produces a, a greater light intensity. We know also, like in a cyclotron, that if you uh, use opposite electrical fields, you now can accelerate particles in a two or three mile area tunnel. And as a result of this, you can accelerate these particles close to the speed of light, and those particles hit a photographic plate, and that's how physicists study matter. So we knew, in fact, that voltage does, in fact, perform work. But heretofore, no one ever dreamed of applying it to switch off the covalent bonding of the water molecule and do it in this way and do it economically. It was always told in the past that current did the work. Right, always current. And they would always, uh, because he now Faraday, he needed modern day electronic circuit designs capable of restricting amps and all voltage to go over. He worked with a very crude battery and he worked with uh, just an electrical wires going into the, the beaker with chemicals. So he created a dead short condition and when you create the dead short condition, you cannot bring voltage up. Voltage remains low and, and amps uh, uh, take over and does the work. All right, so uh, this is the why Faraday did not discover the electropolarization process. Now, in order to come up with the economic way of doing this, then the Lord had me to develop what was called the VIC, or the voltage, it's called the voltage intensifier circuit. Which gave us abilities now to restrict the amps and all voltage to take over. Now, uh, as you know, or who's electronic people in here? Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, <laughs> whenever electronic people can understand this far easier than a physicist. A physicist deals with strictly the, uh, the nucleus of the atom, and electronics deal, or the uh, electronics deals with the movement and deflection of electrons, and that's exactly what we're talking about, moving and deflecting the electron. And in the electronic circuit, it's clearly pro proven by Coulomb's and Newton's second law, you can use electrical force to move electrically charged particles in an electronic circuit, is that not the basic basis of electronics? Yes. Okay, so uh, we're not defining the laws of physics in order to accomplish the task. Now, whenever you put a dielectric liquid between two electrical conductive plates, what do you got? You got a capacitor, right? So we know that when you take a coil and hook it in series to a capacitor, you now develop what's called a resonant charging choke. So now I've set up two charging chokes on the opposite side of the capacitor. And I'm now allowing the water and the properties of water now to become uh, the property or the component part of the electronic circuit. So we now know that on a resonant charging choke, and when I put in a switching diode in here, then as I would pulse the circuit, as I pulse the circuit, then these coils would become energized and they would create an electromagnetic field which acts as an electronic choke, right? The electrons coming off of here uh, has an electromagnetic field, and as a result, when these coils develop their magnetic field, it now chokes off and prevents electron flow from occurring. So since the diode now is acting as a switching diode, once you terminate the pulse, it opens up the pulsing circuit, and now allows these magnetic fields to collapse. And when they collapse, now we're producing a unipolar voltage field across the capacitor, but in the process, we are restricting amps. Now note, we are using the electromagnetic field to restrict the amps, not a resistive element. If you have a resistive element, you're consuming power. I know uh, one thing that was noticed in your secret diagram is that you were using a resistive choke. <clears throat> or was that a mistake? Or was that a, in your actual... No, in filing the patents, uh, there's a, in filing the patents, I filed them in several ways. They said, well, I'll use it this way. Mm -hmm. You have a hard time to get around it. Because not only have I filed the patents on the particular technology, but I filed patents in all of its related area to give me a tough, uh, technological buffer zone to be able to uh, ensure that I can get bring the technology in. So in other words, that resistive choke that you've got in your... It's not necessary. It's not necessary. You see, um, where the hell is this? Um, yeah, <clears throat> you say here, resonant charging circuit. 
resistive coil wire. Uh, yeah, you could you can put a resistive wire with the coil. So some some intelligent guy is going to say, well, I got a copper I got a copper coil, and someone says, well, I'm going to use a resistive wire. Well, sorry folks, I got it both ways. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Just to get around the patent. It's just, just people might use it to get around the, the Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, a guy invents something, they say, well, all I'll do is I'll change something on the patent and, uh, and uh, try to get around it, okay? Well, this is developed under the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. So the simpler it is, the harder it is to get around the patent. And, of course, when, uh, when this knowledge was coming forth, it was fantastic for us because I knew that if we kept it simple like this, well, then it would be very, very hard to go. And if you look at all of our patents, you put a you apply a voltage across that water molecule, you violated my patent rights. Okay, now what we're doing is that this circuit is not only now restricting the amps, but we are now pulsing and adjusting this uh, pulse frequency to tap into the resonant properties of water by the dielectric value of water. And as a result, that when you tune into this, then what happens, Amperol drops down to, to the lowest value and voltage now takes off towards infinity if the electronic components will allow it to occur. What sort of frequency are you talking about? Well, we have various frequencies when you can adjust, adjust to hit resonance. Uh, the key was to go for natural water, non-processed water. And so uh, it was very obvious that uh, we've developed the electronic circuitry to interface with this that we now electronically zero in to the resonant frequency of any form of natural water because it would change based on the contaminants within the water. It just did a peak itself. Right. Uh, it automatically scans it right in, locks right in the resonance and holds it there. What you order change of frequency? Much. Pardon? What order of frequency are we talking about? A few hertz? Or, or? No, no, we go from zero up to 10, uh, 10 kilohertz. Even with this uh, type of circuit you see here, if I hit this at 10 kilohertz, would this not increase it to 20 kilohertz? So not only is this is a pulsing circuit to restrict amp flow, it's also is a frequency multiplier. And guess what else? If I was going to increase more hydrogen gas yield, what would I do? Increase the voltage. Uh -huh. Increase the voltage in. Yes, now how would I do that? Would I need to change the pulsing circuit here? I'll just change the amplitude of it. All I have to do here is just increase the number of turns of this coil, would I not? But if you want to do it electronically so that you can control it, um, you could do it just by having a circuit controlling input voltage. And that oh, yes, in a, in a car. In the yes. car, for example, we're bearing it like from 0 to 12 volts, That's right? right. Yeah, with an accelerator. But these can be uh, varied from 0 to 2,000 volts, yeah. 2 kilovolts, right, or higher. But what I'm pointing out is the electronic circuitry can remain the same. If I want to increase the electrical power still further, the inductance capacitance of this resonant charging choke simply just needs to be increased. So would you step in some more inductance, or would you just design a bigger one if you wanted to? Yeah, I just simply design a bigger one and wrap more coils to it. So instead of hitting it at 2K, I'm hitting it at 5, 5K or hitting it uh, at 90,000 volts. Chokes? Huh? How many millihenries of the chokes, approximately? Well, I mean, you can come, uh, it depends. Again, it depends. Uh, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. You're going to have to adjust the power input of the circuit. And the only, the only problem is to uh, adjust the circuit to get your proper voltage. So you're going to consume electrical power in the circuit. But the point being is, under the power equation, whenever you restrict the amps, the only thing you got left over is voltage, right? Which is potential energy, so you're not consuming it. So I'm going to consume a little bit of energy, uh, 2 amps, or 3 amps, or 5 amps, big deal. Because when you release the energy from the water in the form of the hydrogen gas, its energy yield is 2 and one half times that of gasoline. Now note the rule of thumb, it's not 2 and a half times that of fingernail polish. It's not two and a half times that of butter. It's actually two and a half times that of gasoline. Okay, now, okay. All right, so now the VIC unit was repairing and, uh, and developing to restrict the